Hello fellow makers, I am inviting you along with me today to do a little bit of experimenting with some of the new Tim Holtz Ranger Ink Distress products that were released. Some of these are tried and true. They just got a new facelift and um, some of them are new to us. Uh, so I am excited to kind of give a few of them a try. I'm looking uh, to pair these with the new craft stock paper that was released with Tim's ideology line. And there is the metallic classics craft stock pack and the metallic colors craft stock pack. And so I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see if they are the same as the ones that were in the, the paper pad or if they're a little bit different. And I wanna try some of these products on them and just see how they turn out. And, um, you know, we'll just give it a shot and have a little bit of fun playing around today. I want to pair the crackle, the new translucent crackle paste with the frosted crystal translucent embossing powder. And also try it with the crackle paint, the translucent crackle paint, and see uh, what I think uh, about what... Uh, t what comes out. So we'll see uh, if what I have in my head actually works. And, you know, I do want to say I really love the new rebranding on these because uh, in in the past, um, it's been difficult sometimes to tell apart what uh, I, I pull out of my basket. I keep all of my texture pastes and, and collage mediums and things like that in a basket. And so sometimes it's hard when I pull them out, for example, the grit pastes, um, we have the translucent grip paste and the opaque grip paste, but translucent and opaque was very tiny to see and there's nothing on the top. So when I have them in a basket and I'm trying to pull them out, uh, and even if I'm in a hurry, sometimes it's difficult to tell which is which. And so I really love that. Now it's very clear uh, on the nice black line with the white lettering um, that says grip paste opaque and translucent, it's a little bit bigger for older eyes. And um, it's even bigger on the top, which I really love because this is how I store things. And then if I'm looking through, I don't have to turn it on its side and try and figure out which one is that and pull out all the bottles. So this is, um, this is gonna be wonderful to have this. So we have our grit paste translucent, our grit paste opaque, which we have had in the past. Uh, we have our rock candy. Uh, glitter and our mica flakes which we have also had in the past which is wonderful now we have texture paste that's translucent and I think we might have had this already and I just haven't used it so I'm gonna have to make a point of getting this out and using it and then we have the texture paste opaque which I have used in the past these are not two that I use very often so I'm gonna have to start kind of um you know, up in my game with the texture pastes, right? Now, I always use the crackle. I love the crackle, and for years now, I have used the opaque crackle paste. So I'm super excited about the translucent one. And in the past, I have used the rock candy, um, it was called rock candy crackle paint. And now this is crackle paint translucent, and I'm thinking it's probably the same product. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I have made my paper selections. This, I believe, is the rose gold from the Classics Metallic Pack. And this is a pink, kind of kitsch flamingo-y from the Metallic Colors Pack. And then I decided after my intro, since I admitted that I don't use the texture pastes very often, and to the point that I don't even know if this is new or not. So I decided, you know what, then I'm gonna add that to my little trial and error here and see how things go. So I'm adding the translucent texture paste. I'm adding the translucent grit paste along with the crackle paint translucent and the crackle paste translucent. And I'm pairing them all with frosted crystal to see what I come up with. And then along the way, I may also just use embossing ink to see what happens with that too. So that's where we're headed. And I wanna use some of the stencils that I have. So I pulled out a few and I thought I would, because I'm gonna do kind of a 
I'm going to speed up my experimentation so that you don't have to listen to me yammer on. So let me point out the stencils that I am using. This is THS143, and I don't know the names of them. I only know the numbers of them, but it's this beautiful kind of sunflowery one. Then these are the, here, let me move it so that you can kind of see what it is. This is THS142, and the sister stencil to that, which is THS141. This lovely lace one this is an old one because it's up here and you can tell because it's ths 018 so this is doily and this is a really fun one then ths 7077 very pretty floral and this is a fun one that was released for halloween but i just really like the kind of pattern of it ths 09 two because it doesn't have to be Halloween it could be kind of a quilty looking thing all right so those are the six stencils I will be using and I'm going to cut these up and we will just kind of give this a shot and let's see what we end up with all right <laughs> Here are the results of our experimentation. So let's start off right away with the fail. And that was obviously the crackle paint, which is made to be a paint. It really isn't made to go through the stencils. And so that's obvious here. But apart from that, I don't think I would even use this technique uh, with the paint, which was I put the paint on and then I sprinkled it with the frosted crystal and uh, embossing powder and then I uh, let it dry and then I heated it and it did crackle, but it just, um, yeah, there's just not a, I don't know. I, I can't foresee me using this ever as a technique, uh, stencil or not. It just, um, I am happier with the crackle paint and the, where's my rock candy distress glitter. I'm much happier with that. Um, and it just makes it a shimmery, more shiny, glittery, icy effect. And I wasn't going for an icy effect, um, but I definitely don't like this. So this was the fail. All right, and then let's do the other one that um, was, I, I it turned out, it was quite interesting how it turned out. So I went with the embossing dabber, the clear embossing dabber, and then the frosted crystal embossing powder through the that doily stencil. And um, I thought this would just come right off of the metallic paper, and it really doesn't. I do have a couple of places where it kind of seemed to maybe melt. And then while it was still hot, I accidentally touched it on something. And so it seems to have kind of peeled the color off and left the metallic underneath, which 
tells you, and then this is where I was holding it with the squeezers right here. And so it was hot. And then when I took it off while it was still hot, uh, it took that, uh, the pink part off. So keep that in mind when you are doing this is to just kind of maybe let it cool and set it aside before you, you know, touch it or, you know, test it to see if it's going to come off. Let it dry because this, the rest of it, once it cooled, it's not coming off at all. And I really thought that it would. So I'm surprised that the dabber and the frosted crystal embossing powder um, actually stayed on the metallic paper. So that was a win in my book. All right, so here are our other two, and it the or our other three. It kind of turned out the way I was hoping, uh, so I didn't want anything, you know, wow or whatever. But what I was looking for was something that would leave the metallic in some parts, but kind of mute it and make it a little bit shimmery in other parts, or glittery or sparkly or whatever. So. Let's go with this one first. This is the translucent grit paste. And it goes on very white. And then as it dries, it, it, it doesn't get clear. But you can see that it definitely lets the color through because it turned peach which or rose gold, whatever you want to call it. And then I, again, I put the uh, Frosted Crystal Distress uh, Embossing Powder over it. And it feels a little bit, oh, I can't even describe how it feels. It has a strange feeling to it. It doesn't feel like grit paste, though. Uh, it, it's, it definitely feels different from grit paste with that embossing powder over it. Um, this is not a fail. I, I I don't think I like this technique with this stencil, though. Uh, I probably, it would probably be better if I was doing it on paper with the embossing powders. I think it would be better for that. This one is really interesting, though. This is, again, the Grit Paste and the Frosted Crystal. I do like it in this one a lot. So, again, it turned it that peach rose gold color. And I don't know if you can see the shimmeriness on there, but it it did give the grit paste kind of a shimmery effect to it. And because this the the translucent grit paste kind of maintains a slight bit of opacity to it, um, it it has a a definite, uh, you can see the difference between, you can really see the pattern because of the difference in um, the grit paste and then the metal in the back. So I really like this effect with this particular stencil. All right, sorry about that. You might've heard my kitten, Exitensio, trying to get in the door. He can open the door and he doesn't like it when I'm in here without him. This is the translucent texture paste and I don't know what I did wrong. This one just seemed to, I don't know, have have such differentiation, but this one seemed to kind of bleed under. So I'm not sure what exactly I did wrong. Um, I would probably need to be a little bit more careful maybe next time or something like that. Um, but I do like the way that it looks. And it is a little more translucent than I think that the grit paste is. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it is a little more translucent. So it is a little, a little bit deeper in color and closer to the color underneath. And it does have the shimmer from the frosted crystal. So I would say with certain stencils or maybe people who are better at this, uh, that this technique could be a win with just the translucent, especially if you just wanted a subtle pattern with kind of some sort of uh, shimmer to it on top of your metallic, which is kind of really what I was going for. But I think the real winner here for me is the translucent uh, crackle paste. Where's that one? Translucent crackle 
no, that's the texture paste. That was this one. Sorry, translucent crackle paste. This for me was the winner. So I did it on two of them. And look at this, just because, you know, sometimes it's good to do it on two different colors, but you can see the crackle and then it, it has a differentiation, but I just really love that, that the crackle adds just, um, you know, the lighter and darker patches within the stenciled area. So there's a lot going on there, but it's really cool and I really like it. I think it makes a super interesting background. So uh, these are definitely kind of the looks I was going for when I was thinking up this. And so, um, but I'm, I'm super happy with the translucent crackle paste on this one. And then here it is on the pink color. So yeah, definitely, definitely a win for, I think all, all four of these were definite wins and are exactly what I was hoping for with the look. And then surprisingly, uh, the embossing gel, uh, the embossing dabber with the frosted crystal really came through also. And so that's, I'm really surprised at how well that one worked out. Uh, so again, I consider that a win, but this is the effect I was going for. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Uh, I just wanted to experiment. So thank you for coming along with me as I experimented to try and, you know, come up with kind of a new background to use uh, with my stencils and all of the amazing new textures from Ranger and Tim Holtz in their new packaging that we can see so beautifully. So thank you. As always, if you have any questions about uh, what I attempted to do here or why or anything that I didn't answer in my experimentation, I am always happy to try and answer your, your questions. Just go to my blog and in the right hand column, there is a contact section where you can contact me and I'll be glad to try and answer your questions to the best of my ability. Thank you so much again for stopping by. I so, so appreciate your support and I hope that you all have a very crafty day.